Here we have uh, a duad made by uh, uh, Jimmy Dunlap for me. It's regular, you know, regular situations. Give you, you know. It's typical wah. Here's a whammy pedal. We got it. Like using it in that way, which is pretty cool. And the, here's is just uh, distortion. It's the brute drive. The whammy pedals made by uh, Digitech. Uh, the, the brute drive <laughs> made by Exotic Pedals. It's one of the oldest pedals that I have on the pedal board, and it's the signature uh, Eric Gale's brute drive distortion. <laughs> I don't set it too hot because I use it in conjunction with what I'm about to talk about next, which is the Raw Dog. Uh, 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 I forget how to label it sometimes. I don't want to say boost, but it's, you know, it was patterned off of a tube screamer. So uh, myself and George Tripp and Jimmy Dunlap got together and, you know, I told him I really liked the tube screamer, but we just added a little bit of modification to it. Gave it a little more bid, but mid boost, and uh, gave it a little bit more gain. So it just gives you a tube screamer sort of thing. Basically, it does that job, and I run it sometimes in conjunction with the distortion that gives this, and it gives it a little extra. So you have that, and then I have a typical uh, MXR Octavia fuzz made by MXR. So. Works well when you play a power chord, and it gives you that kind of, I call it the Dark Vader sound, you know, it's just, which is pretty cool. Works well with it little game with it, it sounds very scary. Uh, and I'm always running my Tech 21 delay, boost delay, uh, keep it on all the time, and it's just, you know, quarter note, always on. Nice little, you know, I, I like, a lot of chords, you know, you know, I'm known for a lot of, you know, soloing and stuff like that, but I like to accompany it, accompany it with like nice chords. So it helps for that decaying thing. And then uh, after that, I have this, uh, which is the most heaviest thing I got on the board. It's uh, it's a, a fuzz made by uh, Mojo Hand and it's uh, this particular model is called the Colossus Fuzz. And I, you know, it has a toggle switch for different settings uh, I particularly like the middle setting, uh, uh, and it gives me a nice little uh, milky. I like it, you know, kind of milky Clapton-ish sort of tone. And the ditto is just something I have around that, you know, that uh, I, I can loop myself with and do a couple things. I got a little groove on there. Uh, it is actually, uh, I was working on uh, John Mayer. Shout out to good buddy there, John Mayer. I was doing a little. Uh...
That's nice. It's just stuff you can play with with yourself, you know what I mean? So uh, that almost didn't sound right. Uh, <laughs> you can toy it. Well, that don't sound right. But anyway, you can have fun with the ditto pedal in all kinds of ways. So yeah. that's basically it. And I use the Shure wireless. It's the one that's, uh, for the floor model. Uh, it has the... Uh, it has the tuner built in, you know, you can mute it, you can play. And mute and tune. It's perfect. It's right there. Works well. That's it. What sort of thing do you use the, the Ditto pedal for live? Do you use it with the band or is it just when you play No, something? just just you know, it's just such a sporadic pedal if I were to do it in a live show or something like that, it would be something totally improvisational that I would just randomly do. Well, other than that I'll just have it to document sometimes more often than few random grooves come to my mind and it's there to capture it you know and and then it's there i can go back to it and press play and it's always there it's it's stored until i erase it so right. it's great for that because stuff just randomly comes and i'm like yo that was dope and i can hit that and it records it Could, would you give us an example well if i do it's gonna erase what I got in there, and I'm pretty. I want to keep that. <laughs> and but they have other ones that will record m multiple different things. You know, you can store this one, store that one, store this one, store that one. But this one is predominantly made for storing one thing at a time. You know what I mean? But it multi-tracks, but it just stores one one idea right. at a time and go through that. You know. Okay. Can you go through the uh, guitar? The guitar is, here is the Magneto. This is where the whole uh, Raw Dog Sonnet idea of the signature model that's out now uh, with the uh, smoked pick guard on it. It is, uh, this is where it all started from. I've been with Magneto for quite some time. One of the companies that uh, I really love and I really like them and they believed in me for quite some time. and. Uh, I brought like the original one that I started playing on back out for this tour and uh, it's just uh, going into the specific details about it. I'm not the right person to give the, you know, maybe we can after the fact go through and, and, and you can get the specs and all of that stuff from there. But I just love them, man. The necks feel really nice and thin and, uh, you know, strat configuration, but with one tone knob, that's... That's all it is, and I can equally get to both sides. You know, the cutaway is not dampering me from uh, having to do like I've always had to do with Fender guitars and, you know, figure it out some kind of way, but this makes it a little bit easier to get all the way up to the end of the neck here. And, uh, yeah, man, I've been, uh, this one's, I would say this one's about 10 years old, 10, 12 years old, and, uh, I got a few. I, I, I've got a few guitars now, but it's hard to pick and choose sometimes which one I want to take, which ones I want to take with me. But uh, all of them are are good uh, instruments, so neither one is a bad choice. Can you give us a few examples of the pickup? Sorry. Pickup. I call this the Albert King pickup. <laughs> That the Stevie Ray I call it. That's that uh, the middle pickup. Pretty cool. Uh, call the chicken picker. that and for going all the way back right so out of those five I'm sure you find some sound in there that'll tickle your fancy so with that man it's it's not like rocket science man it's couple of couple of things that go into it and then you know the combination of my amp that I use it's it's uh something that I've uh you know look for 
in, in the instance of you know comfortability and, and 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 as you guys were bringing the amp up today you you were like wow this is really light and that is a really huge part about the cabinets are light they have the neo the new neo speakers that's in them those are 25 watt speakers that's in there uh and this is the raw dog head uh me and marco over at uh Mark Bass, DB Mark is the guitar side of Mark Bass, Bass Products, and uh, they're pushing them more. Greg Howe has a signature model, Frank Gambali, you know, a couple other guitars have, you know, signatures, but the, the Raw Dog Head is just straight, clean, single channel amp, and you let the pedals do the rest. And uh, I like straight, clean because I like a lot of, you know, clean stuff, you know, to accompany with, you know, solos and stuff like that. And, <clears throat> It just does the job. It's 250 watts. Uh, right now, I'm just running through a single cabinet, but sometimes I run up to four cabinets off of one head. Uh, I can do that, uh, and uh, it gives me the tone I'm looking for. Nice and loud, nice and bright, and it's beautiful. Great work done with Marco and them over there. Shout out to DV Mark and Marco and the whole Mark Base DV Mark family over there. Y'all made a good one with this one, man. <clears throat> do you use the same, um, same rig in the studio? I do. So is exactly the same? Yeah, except for I have like two or three cabinets. Right. Uh, but yeah, used uh, 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 um, predominantly on every song, the DV Mark was used on this new record, Crown. Uh, we blended a little bit of Dumble in there, you know, just to give it another little, because this amp is so clean, we wanted to give it a little bit of edge with a Dumble you know, suggested by Joe, but Joe was like, man, there's nothing wrong with the tone you got. That's amazing that we have to have that tone on the record. It sounds amazing. It's awesome. I love it. And so to get uh, a thumbs up from uh, a vintage connoisseur such as Joe Bonamassa, then that speaks volume for this uh, product. And uh, so, yeah, in the studios, and this is what I'm using. And it's solid state. It's solid state power but two preamp. Uh -huh. So the tone is coming from the tube and the power is coming from solid state, which is, I think, is the perfect hybrid for me. I mean, it works, works great. Mm -hmm.